This course will guide you through the process of learning how to use the PeopleNet Connected Tablet. There are nine training topics that will go through the day in the life of a driver. By the end of this training, you will be able to successfully use the device from the time you log in for your shift until you need to log out at the end of your shift. To begin the login process, you should have a driver ID and password. Notice the keyboard to type in your driver ID appears on the screen. Once you have typed in your driver ID, you can click on the next button to type in your password. Once you type in your driver ID and password, you need to submit this information. You can click on the done button on the keyboard or you can click on the down arrow to collapse the keyboard. At this point in the login process, the device is making a data call to upload your log sheets. This may take a little bit of time depending on how many logs need to be uploaded to the device. Once your logs have been received, you will be notified from the Verify Log Data screen that there may be some actions you will be required to complete. You will now be directed to the Duty Status screen. This is where you will choose your duty status and or any other status you will need to track on your logs. The Choose Status screen gives you the option to change your status to either On Duty Driving, On Duty Not Driving, or Sleeper Birth. For the sake of logging into the device, click on the On Driver button. This next screen will require you to enter your shipment information. You have the option to enter a new shipment ID or use the current shipment ID. As well, you will be able to tell if you have yet to enter your shipment information by looking at the icons at the top right corner of the screen. This icon means you have yet to enter your shipment information. The shipment icon will be removed once you enter your shipment information. To enter a new shipment ID, you will need to click on the Enter Shipment ID field. The keyboard will appear so you can enter your shipment ID. Once you have entered an ID, you can click on the Done button. This next screen will list your current shipment on the left screen. If this is correct, you can click on the Next button. You are now logged in to the device and have successfully changed your duty status and shipment information. After you log in to the device, you should be at the Home screen. To enter your shipment information, you will need to click on the eDriver Logs button. You will be directed to the ELD main screen. Click on the Shipment button now. You will notice on the left side of the screen there are current shipments already entered. For the sake of entering a new shipment, you will learn to remove the old shipment information. To delete or remove the current shipment information, you will need to click on the radio button to the right of the current shipment number. Once you have clicked on the radio button, you can now click on the Remove button. You will now have a blank screen to enter your new shipment information. To enter your new shipment information, you will need to click on the Shipment ID field. The keyboard will appear for you to enter your information. Once you have finished entering your new shipment information, you can click on the Done button or the Down arrow to collapse the keyboard. Once the keyboard collapses, you can click on the Add button to add your shipment information. You will notice the shipment information you entered is listed under the Current Shipment field. To return to the Home screen, click on the Home button. You will now learn how to enter your trailer information. Click on the E Driver Logs button. You will notice on the top right of the screen there is a red trailer icon. This means that you have not entered your trailer information. This will disappear from the screen once you've entered your trailer information. To enter your trailer information, click on the Trailers button. Entering your trailer information is similar to entering your shipment information. If you have a trailer entered in your current trailers field, you can remove it prior to entering your new trailer information. Click on the radio button now to choose the trailer you would like to remove. Click on the Remove button to delete the current trailer information. Now you will need to enter your current trailer. To enter your trailer, click on the Enter Trailer ID field. The keyboard will appear for you to enter your new trailer ID. Once you have entered your information, you can click on the Done button. You will notice the new trailer ID will be under the Current Trailers field. To return to the ELD Home screen, click on the Home button. You have now been directed to the ELD Home screen. Notice that the red trailer icon on the top right of the screen has disappeared since you have entered your new trailer information. You have now completed the module on entering shipment and trailer information. You have the option to view and certify your logs anytime during your shift. To do so, you will need to click on the Logs button on the ELD main screen. This is a view of your current logs. To view the detail of your log, you will need to click on the Details button. You will be able to see a detail of your logs from this screen. To see all of the details, you can use the touch screen on the PCT to scroll up or down. If you would like to go back to the grid, you can click on the Grid button, or if you want to see any events that have occurred on the PCT, you can click on the Events button. The Events screen will show you any activity or status the PCT has recorded. 
You can use the touch screen on the PCT to scroll up or down to view all events. You can also go back to the log grid, see your log details, certify your logs, or return back to the ELD main screen. We will now go through how to certify your logs. Once you click on the Certify button, this pop-up screen will require you to enter your password. This is a safeguard for you so that no one else can certify your logs. To enter your password, you will need to click on the blank Enter Password field. The keyboard will appear once you click on the Enter Password field. You now will be able to type in your password. Once your password is entered, you will need to click on the Agree button. Once you click on the Agree button, your logs will be certified and you will return to the last screen you were on prior to certifying your logs. To return to the ELD main screen, you will need to click on the Home button. You are now back on the ELD main screen and have completed this module on certifying your logs. This module will go over the options menu and how to view your hours of service and current exceptions. There are two ways in which you can enter the options menu. You can click on the small square icon at the top left of the screen, or you can click on the options button from the menu at the bottom of the screen. Notice that the options button in the menu has an orange triangle in the corner. This means that there are items in the options menu that need attention and should be viewed and resolved. To view your hours of service and current exceptions, you will need to click on the small down arrow on the ELD main screen. We will start by showing you how to view your hours of service from the ELD main screen. Once you click on the small down arrow, your hours of service and any exceptions will show up on the screen. You can choose this option at any time from the ELD main screen. We will now go over the options button, starting with reviewing your logs. If you have uncertified logs or log edit proposals, it is important to review logs before certifying. You will need to review and accept or reject any log edits before certifying your logs. Notice that the icon next to Review Logs is orange. Again, this means that there are logs that need to be reviewed and approved. You will have the ability to review any of the logs on this screen. If there are any logs that you need to annotate, accept, or reject, you can click on it and complete the task. It is required that you accept or reject any log edits before certifying. If your logs are correct, you can now certify them. Anytime you certify your logs, you will need to enter your password. This is to ensure that the owner of those logs is the one that is certifying the logs. Once you have entered your password, you can click on Agree. You will now learn about unidentified driver incidents. Unidentified driver events are a result of mileage being accrued without someone logged in. It is important that you review any unidentified driving. When reviewing an unidentified driver event, it is important that you pay close attention to details. We recommend you review start time, end time, starting location, ending location, and vehicle miles. To annotate, accept, or reject any unidentified driver event, you will need to click on the event. From this screen, you will have the ability to annotate, accept, or reject the selected driving event. For the sake of training, we will accept this unidentified driving event. Click on the Accept button. Notice that the orange corner disappears from the Options icon. This means that all log information requiring review has been managed. You have completed the Review Logs and Unidentified Driver portion of this module. You will now learn how to complete a roadside inspection. Once you are in the Options menu, you may need to scroll down to find the Roadside Inspection option. Once you click on the Roadside Inspection button, you will be shown your Hours of Service graph. From this screen, you can transfer your driver logs to the officer via web service or email. To transfer your driver logs, you will need to click on the Data File Transfer button. You will need to choose to transfer your logs via email or web service. If the officer would like you to enter a comment, you can do so in the Enter File Comment field. The data is encrypted and will only be available to the officer to access. Once you have made your selection, you can click Done. You will get a message stating that the transfer request has been queued. Click on the OK button. Once you try to leave the roadside inspection menu, it is required that you enter your password. This is to protect all other information outside of the driver's logs. It essentially stops an officer from just going anywhere on the device. Once you enter your password, you can click OK. You have now completed the roadside inspection portion of this module. The only way you can go off duty at the device without logging out of the device is to go into rest break status. You will notice from the ELD main screen, you have the option to click on the Rest Break button at the top right corner of the screen. You will need to confirm that you want to log a rest break. Once you click OK, you will be put in an off-duty status. You will notice that the Rest Break button turns red and is changed to Stop Break. On the left side of the screen, you will see that your current status is off. 
As well, during your rest break, the device will show when you will gain time back. The amount of time gained depends on your log activity and your current regulation. When you have completed your rest break, you will need to click on the Stop Break button. This pop-up screen will ask you to choose a status. If you do not choose a status and just drive away, the device will put you in a driving status. For the sake of training, you will choose to go on duty driver. You will notice your status has changed to on duty driving and the rest break button is no longer red. You have completed this module on rest break. This module will show you the messaging system on the PCT. You will learn how to view emails sent to the device and create your own emails. In order to get to the messaging system, you will need to be on the home screen. Click on the messaging button on the home screen. This screen is the messaging inbox. From the inbox, you can open any emails that have been sent to you. You can create an email. You can view your contacts in the system, and you can delete your messages in the inbox. We will first go over how to read an email sent to you. To view an email, you will need to click on an email in your inbox. This is what an email that was sent to the device looks like. You can choose to click on the playback button to have an audio playback of the message. You can also save, reply, or delete the message. To return to the previous screen, you will need to click on the arrow at the top right corner of the screen. You are now back on the messaging inbox screen. To create your own email, you will need to click on the email button. You will need to enter the email address of the person or persons you would like to receive the email. You can click on the blank field next to the contacts button to type in the email address, or if the recipient is in your contacts that has been set up in the device, you can click on the contacts button. You are now on the address book screen. This is a list of contacts that have been added to your messaging system. You will be able to click on any contacts or groups from this screen. To choose a contact, you will need to click on the radio button next to the contact or group name. Once you have chosen the contacts or groups you wish to send an email to, you can go ahead and click on the Accept button. You are now on the Create Email screen. To type in your message, you will need to click on the blank field on the screen. The keyboard will appear on the screen so you can type your message. Once you have finished your message, you will need to collapse the keyboard. You will now be able to send your message. This pop-up screen will ask you if you would like to send this message now or on the next data call. A data call is every 30 minutes, and if you choose the option later, the message will be sent when the data call is established. This next pop-up screen will let you know your message has been sent. You are now back on the inbox screen. If you would like to delete emails that have been read, you can click on any of the radio buttons to the right of the email message. To delete all of your emails, you can click on the Select All button. You will notice that all the radio buttons are checked and the Delete button has been enabled. To delete these messages, you will need to click on the Delete button. This pop-up screen will appear and ask you to confirm that you would like to delete these messages. Click on the Yes button. You will notice your emails have been deleted from your inbox. To return to the home screen from here, you will need to click on the PeopleNet logo at the top left corner of the screen. You are now back on the home screen and have successfully completed the messaging module. To log in a co-driver, you will need to click on the driver button on the ELD main screen. The co-driver will be directed to the login screen to enter his or her driver ID and password. Click on the Enter Driver ID field to type in the driver ID. Once the keyboard appears, the co-driver will need to type in his or her driver ID. Then click on the Next button to bring the cursor down to the password field. Click on the Next button. Once the cursor is on the password field, the co-driver can type in his or her password. When the password is entered, you can click on the Done button or the down arrow to collapse the keyboard. The co-driver will need to click on the Sign In button once this screen appears. The PCT will now retrieve the co-driver's logs. This may take a few minutes depending on how many logs need to be retrieved. Once the logs have been retrieved, you will see this Verify Log Data pop-up screen. This screen will notify the co-driver that there may be a need to review his or her log information. You will need to click OK to complete the login. To complete the login, the co-driver will need to choose a duty status. Click on the Status button. The Choose Status pop-up screen will appear so the co-driver can choose a duty status. For the sake of training, we will choose Sleeper Birth. The co-driver will need to enter the current shipping information for his or her logs. The shipment ID will need to be entered by clicking the Enter Shipment ID field first. The keyboard will appear so the ID can be entered. To collapse the keyboard, you will need to click on the down arrow. Once the ID is entered and the keyboard has collapsed, you can then click on the Add button. Once the co-driver is logged into the PCT, the ELD screen will show the co-driver's status. When you need to switch the co-driver, which is now the inactive driver, to the active driver, you will need to click on the co-driver's status on the ELD screen. This will switch the co-driver to the active driver. 
You have now completed the CoDriver login process. To begin the logout process, you will need to click on the status button. To go off duty and sign out of the PCT, you will need to click on the off sign out button on the choose status pop-up screen. After clicking on the off sign out button, you will have two sign out options. You can either sign out completely by choosing the off sign out option, or you can sign off the device by remaining in the on duty status by choosing the on sign out option. The verify log data screen will appear and will let you know whether or not you have log information to review. If you have already certified your logs, this screen will appear stating that you do not have any logs to review. If you have logs that need your review, another screen will appear letting you know this. Items that may need your review are uncertified logs, unidentified driving events, and or conflicts. If you choose no on this pop-up screen, you will skip the review logs process and you will then be logged out of the PCT. If you choose yes on the pop-up screen, you will be directed to go through the review logs process. For the sake of training, we will go through the review logs process. Click on the Yes button to review your logs. If there are any items that need reviewing, the screen will look like this. You have the option to annotate, accept, or reject the log item. If you choose to annotate a log item, you will be directed to another screen to enter the annotation. Once you have chosen one of the three options, your log will reflect the change on the screen and you will then need to click on the Done button. Once all items have been reviewed, you will be able to certify your logs. It is recommended that if you are logging off duty, you certify your logs prior to leaving the truck. To certify your logs, you will need to click on the Certify button. Every time you enter your logs, you will need to enter your password, verifying that you approve of the logs. This is a safeguard so that no one else can verify your logs. Once you enter your password, you can click on the Agree button. Once you have changed your duty status to off duty and verified your logs, you will be directed to the login screen. As a reminder, if you do not see the login screen prior to you leaving the truck, you are not logged out of the PCT. You must see the screen prior to leaving the truck. You have now completed this module on logging out of the PCT.